Adriatica Ionica stage three. All right, so this race basically starts really high, sort of mainly descent for a lot of it. And then there's these sort of cappy, as they like to say in Italy, like five, six climbs, four to six minutes long. Anyway, Fausto Masnada, winner of a Giro d'Italia stage this year, also won the stage in the Tour of Alps, and rumoured to be going to CCC is off the, oh, sorry, UAE is off the front. Uh, right, so we have Movistar attacking, I believe it's the dead German rider, I can't remember his name. Evan Pohl goes with him, Trek, Trek Lad and uh, Neri Setoli also follow, but Evan Pohl's on a different level, like just look at the boy. The boy's 19, I believe, and he just goes absolutely flying past everyone out the saddle, just flying on his S-Works tarmac. There's just no one who can even come close. Like, he's just... Look at the chaos he's already put in. I believe this is Nicholas Egg in the, from Trek, who's following, who's, you know, done the under-23. He's come top three in the year, Tour de l'Avenir. But it's no match for Evan Paul, who just destroys it. So you can see they're about a minute back at the moment. Um, and he's got to try and close that to... Fausto Masnada, there's a bit of reaction behind from the group, um, but quick step of good numbers, and they're going to shut it down, so it's all chill, um, but here you go, uh, he's, Mother Star's gone, boom, next guy from Novo Nordisk goes, boom, doesn't even try and get on the wheel, Evan Paul is absolutely flying up this climb, small lad, probably about 58, 60 kilos, something like that, not much, um, but yeah, he doesn't post dip powder on Strava anymore, he used to, and he's very strong, very, very strong in the big dog and just flying up these climbs. 28k to go. And he's like, yep, I'm going to go solo. And you can see people behind are just like, what? What is this boy on? He's just flying past absolutely everyone. This stage race, I do enjoy. I thought today was going to be a sprint stage or a boring stage, but I sort of forgot. Because of the profile, looks like these climbs are really small. Like I thought they were like one minute climbs, but actually they're decent. So it was a really interesting race. Um, and yeah, quick step dominated from start to finish. Um, but yeah, he's, so he's now 45 seconds. So he's already gained like 20, 30 seconds on the group behind. Um, put 30 seconds into, uh, into Fausto Masnada. Um, so yeah, Fausto's further up the road. This climb gets real steep at the end, as you can see here. 300 meters to go, but you know, they're in their smallest gear, probably 39.30 or 39.28. And really just, you know, struggling to get up this climb. Uh, it's steep, it's 300 meters to go. You can see Evan Paul's looking around, trying to figure out what the gap is like. Um, but yeah, he's taken to cycling only two, three years ago. Um, he won pretty much every single race in the junior rank last year. Uh, and he's just an absolute monster. Fausto Masnada is no mug though. I mean, he's won Giro stages and he's strong. He's going to the World Tour next year for sure. I think it's UAE or Bahrain is signing him. I can't remember, but this is the descent. And um, you'd think, you know, he's only taken to cycling recently. Remco Evenpol used to play football, very high level, like played for an academy, probably would have been pro maybe. Uh, but anyway, he just decided to change to cycling. Um, but yeah, his handling, his bike handling is very, very good uh, on the downhill. His teammate did say he wasn't very good at, um, in the peloton. Apparently, his like, bunch of positioning isn't good. But that's because he's never in the peloton at the junior races. Because he was always off the front. He won the Europeans by like 10 minutes or something ridiculous. Uh, he's just um, a different boy. So anyway, you can see he's absolutely flying down this descent compared to Fausto. I think Fausto did ease up, to be fair to him. I think he realized, you know, Remco's going Remco's to get me. So I'll just save myself and... Um, Make sure I don't get spat straight away. Um, but obviously, he will get spat because this is Remco Evenpoel. When Remco's on one of those days, it just happens. Even Campanets followed him. Did crash up to be fair, but I mean, like, he's just on one of those days. But look at the speed out, out of this corner that Remco has. The acceleration. He's just a monster. What type of rider will he be? No one knows. He's filling with his brakes. That's never a good sign. But anyway, he closes this gap pretty quickly and um, just literally goes straight past him. Um, doesn't, it's weird, I think in some ways tactically he doesn't always seem the smartest guy, but because he's just so strong, like now he just goes straight past him, okay, fair play, but for the next like seven kilometers, he's on the front the whole time, like literally that's it. You can see the gaps opening up already, this is a false flat downhill sort of thing, um, so obviously he's flying, but I would say that he does need to sort of in some ways, just like now, like, you know, you do this turn, flick your elbow out, like you wouldn't see... Sagan, do, maybe Sagan when he was younger would do this, but now Sagan, you know, he flick out his elbow, or, you know, like, people who are a bit more experienced would definitely do that. But I think Remco is just, just so strong, and he's probably used to racing in the juniors, where he would just, like, literally ride past everyone. They'd be on his wheel. He'd literally ride them off his wheel. Um, so I think, obviously, like, you know, he's got to change. But at the same time, I mean, he's 19, and, uh, yeah, there's a 19k to go. He's literally on the front the whole time. Um, and Fausto was like, okay, fair play, I'll just stay on your wheel, <laughs> hope for the best. 
Uh, but yeah, Bernal on the tour in three years, uh, in 20 years, 22. Can Ramco do that? I don't know. I think he's pro he's going to be a Grand Tour rider. He's not going to be a Spring Classics rider. I think he's just too small. He might turn, you know, be able to turn into an Ardennes rider potentially. This guy attacked Velasco, got brought back. Quick step had too many numbers, and it was just never really going to go away um, because every time anyone would attack, they'd just chase it back. Because let's be honest, they have 100% confidence that Remco is going to be able to drop Fausto. Um, so yeah, they just they just let it go out. The gap now is about a minute and a half, um, and yeah, this guy's just dropping back and realizing that you know it's not a good day out for me when Fausto's up the road. Um, so yeah, it's but yeah, Remco is just he's just something else. Um, there's the group chasing. So you can see there's a decent chase on them. Um, the time gap isn't here, but the time gap at the moment is about a minute 30. Um, so, you know, he's put a lot of time into it. But you can see quick step of James Knox, they have Philippe Gilbert, they have Tris Dev uh, no, not Tris Dev nice. um, Florence Seneschal, and I believe Mikel Honoré potentially as well. Um, Israel Saki and Academy chasing hard. Um, but yeah, you can still see here. You can't see the time gap, unfortunately, but they've still got, you know, no, here we go, time gap, one minute 42. This is one of the capi I was talking about when I saw sort of short climbs. And uh, yeah, he's he's just on the front still, and this is it. Cheerio! It doesn't even look that steep here, but I think it is. I think it's probably still six, seven percent. And um, Remco is just flying in the saddle. So the Italian con commentator is saying, he sits in the saddle and just spins it. Not as ridiculous as Chris Froome, but you know he he does like to s definitely sit in the saddle. He obviously attacks out the saddle for sure, but um, when he's riding tempo, he really does like the in the saddle sort of thing. Um, but yeah, he's just an absolute monster. Just look at him flying up this climb. Um, I looked at James Knox power data. The group basically rode at like 350 to 370 watts. He's like 58 kilos, so that's more like you know six and a half watts per kilo up most of these climbs. So he's riding probably similar wattage, maybe a little less. Um, but anyway, he distanced Fausto Masnado. This is our last 200 meters. Held it solo, got a gap of two minutes. No one came close. What an absolutely ridiculous ride from Remco Evenpole. He is gonna win every race he enters in the future. He is off the chart, the boy. Celebration could do with some work, but um, absolute legend. These are the afterburners. There's James Knox. There's um, Philippe Gilbert. And uh, there's Mark Padun, who's winning the overall. I will just watch the finish because, you know, it's a pretty exciting race how it happens in the end. Um, the last climb was done at 413 watts for four minutes. Yeah, as I said, James Knox weighs about 58 kilos. So you can see that, you know, they're pretty strong boys, aren't they? Doing seven, seven watts per kilo pretty much for the last four minutes of the climb at the end of a 200k stage race, 200k stage, um, and this is stage four, so obviously. There's Ben Hermans going, he's second in GC. Uh, Mark Padun's um, first. Another guy, I can't remember his name, is third. I think it's Dai Quintana, and then James Knox is fourth. Um, the gravel, the reason Remco is allowed to go is because the gravel section, he lost a lot of time, so he lost two minutes there, and then on the final climb, the uh, Queen stage yesterday, he also lost a bit of time. But you think, you believe he's now up to fifth overall because he put two minutes into this group. Um, but yeah, quick step happy. Want to get one to Maris Lamertink from Rombot. Decides he's going to go. Good move. James Knox tries to go on the inside. Can't do it. Gilbert goes on the other side of the road and just destroys everyone. Because this is what Philippe Gilbert, similar to a cowboy, I guess, a bit longer. And um, flat finish. And cheerio. Thanks for coming. Quick step one, two. And then James Knox, I believe, gets fourth or fifth. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Remco Evanpol is a beast. And uh, look forward to watching the boy destroy some races in the future. See ya. Tell me, can you see the stars?